One night at Lord Beerus's world, after Goku taught Kagomi hand-to-hand -hand combat, they sat on the soft grass in relaxation. Shippo was asleep behind the tree. Otherwise, Kagomi glanced down, feeling a bit sad. Goku noticed there was something wrong with her. He wondered why Kagomi acted that way after they trained together was just fun. He began to scoot closely to Kagami. He knew she didn't mind at all, but she gladly to sat next to him. Hey, Kagami, is something wrong? You look sad. Did I do something wrong? Kagomi smiled at him. It was just that um, well it was just that I'm glad someone cares about me. Of course I care about you, Kagami. You're my friend, Goku said, smiling. Vegeta glanced his eyes at them. Is there something you want to tell us? She sighed at that. She nodded in response. I could tell. Yes, there's something I should tell you about how I look sad. Sure. Tell us, Kagami, Goku said. And you can tell us everything you want? Besides, we want to know about how you and Shippo came from the feudal era, Wiss said, smiling. Okay, Lady Midoriko, the creator of the Shikin Jewel had sent us to Universe 7, Kagomi explained. I see, is she a god or a priestess? Beerus asked. She's a priestess, and she's also a creator of the Shikin Jewel of Four Souls. There are a lot of jewel shards around in this world because it was sent into Universe 7, and it was never been found in the feudal era, Kagomi said. Really? Is that why you and Shippo came here right before I met you guys? Goku asked, curiously. She nodded. Midoriko avoided us for being found by my old groups. Vegeta was confused. Your old group? Do you mean you guys left them? What happened? What do they look like? Goku asked, his brow arched. Well, my old group has Inuyasha who is a half-demon dog, Miroku who is a monk with a dark void in his right hand, and Sango who is the last demon slayer of her village and her best friend is a two-tailed fire Nakamata named Kirara, Kagami explained. Goku blinked his eyes as he realized she had missed her friends. He doesn't blame her for that, he wasn't an idiot at all. Why did you leave the group right before Midoriko sent you and Shippo to Universe 7? Goku asked. Inuyasha invited Kikayo into the group without telling me, Kagami said. Who's Kikayo? Vegeta asked. She took a big sigh with a sweat drop. Well, I got a lot of explaining to tell you guys, but it's a long story. All right, tell us, Beerus said, crossing his arms across his chest. Flashback. Kagomi came back from the modern era. She was looking forward to seeing Inuyasha and the others again. It's been two weeks since she stayed home, doing her schoolwork, but gladly, she had graduated from high school before she got to go back to the feudal era, and continued to travel with Inuyasha and their friends. It's been four years since she first arrived when she was younger. She brought the locket necklace from her pocket. It was a gift for Inuyasha. She couldn't wait to give it to her own best friend until Shippo arrived to see her. Kagami, you're back! Shippo exclaimed happily. Hey, Shippo! Kagomi greeted him. She felt being wrapped in the neck by Shippo's small arms. I missed you? How is everyone? Well, as a matter of fact, the groups are fine, Inuyasha invited Kikayo into the group before you left, Shippo said. She blinked in shock. What? And he didn't tell me? Shippo nodded with a sweat drop. Kagomi frowned. That Inuyasha? Of course, Shippo knew she was very angry at Inuyasha. She couldn't believe that her own best friend, her crush, didn't tell her that he had let Kikayo join the group. Right now, the two of them headed their way to the other until they heard a complainer's voice. Ugh. Kagami is late again. And where that little brat go? Inuyasha shouted in annoyance. Inuyasha, please calm down. Kagomi must have her reasons for being late. Surely Shippo went to go find her, and then take her back to the group, Moroku said. He scowled, rolling his amber eyes. I can't stand waiting here for her when she was late all the time. I'm tired of her commenting sit with the subjugation of beans that I wore around my neck. There. Kagami saw Kikayo interrupting them with a smirk. She wouldn't like the way she smiles. She wasn't so innocent and kind. She and Shippo didn't trust her. True, Inuyasha, but why do you all put up with her? Besides, she is a weak priestess for one. We all know I am stronger in both spiritual powers and combat than her. Kagomi glared at her. She couldn't believe Kikayo called her weak. That's not true. Kagomi was way stronger than that. She can sense all kinds of jewel shards. She also can help people out when there was trouble. That's not true, Kikayo. Kagami has the same spiritual power and combat. She's way stronger than you. Sango snapped, glaring at her. Kagami knew Sango didn't trust her as well. One of her groups didn't get along with Kikayo. Except for Inuyasha. Kikayo narrowed her honey brown eyes softly. Whatever, comma. You can lie to yourself that I'm wrong, she said coldly. 
You are the wrong one never be stronger than Kagami. Sango shouted in anger. Monk, calm this bitch down, Inuyasha said, glancing his amber eyes at him. Don't call Sango a bitch, Inuyasha. Moroku scolded him. I can call her whatever I want, Inuyasha said with a rude smirk. Kagami had enough of Inuyasha's attitude. This is unforgivable. She couldn't help but to walk towards the group and started to yell at Inuyasha. Inuyasha, sit boy. Kagomi yelled angrily as Inuyasha slammed his face into the ground. Sit, 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 sit. So many times she kept saying and yelling sit until Inuyasha learned his lessons. Inuyasha was bawling, almost getting unconscious. He got up and glared at Kagami. What the hell was that for, wench? Inuyasha, this is unforgivable. I can't believe you didn't tell me that you invited Kikayo into our group without my knowledge. How could you not tell me this, Inuyasha? You are a jerk? Kagomi yelled at him with rage. Everyone is in shock. Except Kikayo, who just glared at her. Well, I'm the leader of the group and I can invite her to whatever I want. You'll never be stronger than Kikayo. You're my jewel shard detector, and you will find us the shards. Inuyasha argued. You know what, Inuyasha? I'll never be your shard detector. I'm tired and sick of being treated like your tool. Inuyasha, I am no longer needed. I'm leaving. Kagomi argued back before she left the group without saying goodbye. Shippo followed her in the field. Everyone watched her. Inuyasha and Kikayo watched her leave with a glaring looks on their faces. Flashback ends. After Kagomi explained, she still kept the locker necklace she had for four months. They noticed she had loved Inuyasha, but they knew her heart doesn't belong to him anymore. She glanced at the locker as she opened it up with the pictures of her and her excrush Inuyasha. Well, not to be rude or anything, but Inuyasha is quite the idiot, Vegeta said. Kagami looked over her shoulder at Vegeta. What do you mean? What we mean, Kagami, instead of moving on from his past, he decides to stay in the past, destroying his future in the progress, Wiz said, pointing it out. That's true, but I don't understand why Inuyasha wants me if Kikayo was joining the group, Kagami said sadly. What do you mean? Goku asked, when Koga comes around, he tells him that I belong to him, but when Kikayo shows up, he only cares about her, and leaves me to defend myself, Kagami said. What an idiot he is, Vegeta said. Beerus nodded in agreement. I agree with you, Vegeta, I got to admit, demon dogs tend to be very possessive of anything that they feel belongs to them. How do you know Beerus? Kagami asked curiously. Well, I've learned of history about the feudal era that you've been talking about, Beerus said. You mean the book? He nodded in response. Well, I was in Wyish's precious shard detector after all, Kagomi said sadly, glancing down at the ground. That's not true, Kagami. You're very precious to us. You're a precious comrade to us, Goku said. Really? He nodded with a warm smile. Yeah, he replied. Inuyasha was wrong, and so was Kikayo. Your looks are only a part of who you are. It's your personality that counts. True, you're an amazing woman. We know you are way stronger than Kikayo. They were wrong about you, Vegeta said with a smirk. Kagomi began to smile. Thank you, Goku and Vegeta. Now get rid of the locker necklace you have, Vegeta pointed at the necklace that Kagomi was carrying. What? Yeah, Vegeta was right. If you don't want to keep it, then get rid of it. The past is in the past. When you get rid of it, you'll feel better, and your heart will be healed? You won't feel the pain again, Goku said. Okay. I'll get rid of it, you guys, Kagomi said before she tossed it into the sky where the locker necklace was floating in the air. When she threw it away in the sky, Goku couldn't help himself. He leaned towards Kagami and captured her right cheek with a sweet kiss. Kagami was in shock. And so was Vegeta. At that moment, she knew Goku was still married to Chi-Chi and have two sons. She was in trouble. Kakarot, what are you doing? Vegeta shouted. I could heal her broken heart. So I gave her a sweet kiss like Bulma did to you, Goku said with eyes closed and a smile. Have you not kissed your wife before? Goku shook his head. Not really, I've never kissed her before. But you are married, Kakarot, and you were supposed to kiss when you are her husband. Vegeta shouted more. Relax, Vegeta, it's not like I'm cheating on Chi Chi, it's just that I wanted to heal her heart? That's all, Goku said. Vegeta scowled, blushing in embarrassment. Kagami couldn't help but chuckle. She knew she was secretly in love with Goku. Speaking of which, she knew that was wrong when he was not supposed to kiss a mistress when he cheated on his wife. You know what? Kagami didn't care at all. She doesn't know what she was thinking. Suddenly, she heard a beeping noise from Wiss. He has a call on Bulma, the blue-haired woman with blue eyes and a white suit. 
Kagome noticed that planet Earth is in the afternoon day. Surely it was nighttime in Beerus' world. Bulma says it was an emergency, and tells them that future trunks had arrived in the present day. Kagome knew what will happen next, 